This is the Google Home Hub. It is the latest entrant into the market of smart displays. I'm going to go over its design and features, and at the end, I'll let you know if it's worth buying or not. If you want a more detailed written review, head on over to techtechandmoretech.com or check the link in the description below. Let's start with the design. It's a seven inch touchscreen that sits on top of a single full range speaker that's kind of wrapped in a soft mesh fabric. It kind of looks like a screen sitting on top of a small pedestal. There are two far field microphones to make sure that it can pick up your voice from across the room. It also has an ambient light sensor so that it can change the brightness and color temperature of the screen depending on the ambient light of the room you're in. On the back of the screen, you've got a single toggle to turn off the microphone, and you've got a volume rocker on the side to adjust the volume. You may have noticed I didn't mention a camera, and that's because the Google Home Hub doesn't have one. Google says this is for privacy reasons. They don't want people to be freaked out by having a camera linked to a device that's always on in your house. And that's kind of a good thing, that's good PR for Google. I'm sure it also helps that they don't have a good video messaging service of any sort, and also not having an extra piece of hardware in there helps keep the cost of the device down. You have your choice of four different colors for the Google Home Hub. You got dark gray, light gray, blue, and pink. Overall, I think the overall design and the fact that you can get these kind of fun colors will go a long way in terms of mainstream adoption of these kind of devices. They definitely kind of look more like home decor and they kind of fit into your kitchen or your living room much better than something that looks very sort of utilitarian and techy like the first generation Echo Show. At seven inches, the screen on the Google Home Hub is the smallest out of the smart display screens. I do appreciate the minimalist design that Google went for here, though I would have really liked to see maybe a 10 inch version as well. And who knows, maybe next year they will come out with a Google Home Hub Max that has a 10 inch version, who knows. The screen size is fine for smaller kitchens or living rooms, but if you kind of want to see what's happening on it from across the room, it can get a little bit trickier, especially if you don't have the best eyesight in the world. Whereas a larger competition, like the Echo Show, or the new Facebook portal, Lenovo, whatever, it's much easier to kind of just see it from across the room at a glance to see where your timers are at or whether stuff like that. Even though it's not a large screen, it's a very good screen. It's got good colors, good viewing angles, and it, the ambient EQ that they have in it is really nice. Basically, just like your phone will adjust the brightness and the color temperature of your screen depending on the room it's in, the Google Home does the same. So as it's getting darker, the brightness will automatically lower and the screen will go into more sort of orangey tint because it's just lighter on your eyes when it gets dark. The Google Home Hub is almost perfect in size to put on like a dresser or a nightstand to sort of be there for like a morning routine as you're getting ready to tell your appointments, weather, traffic, whatever. The Google Home Hub doesn't have terrible speakers. They're perfectly fine for traffic, news, that kind of stuff. So if you listen to music often on your smart speaker and that's kind of important to you, then that's one thing to keep in mind with the Google Home Hub. The Google Home Hub obviously runs a version of Android and it's packed full of features that I'm sure Android users have been accustomed to for years now. Google Assistant is the brains behind the operation here. And for the most part, anything that it can do on your phone, it can do on the Home Hub as well. Upon setting up the Home Hub, you'll download the Home app on your phone, you'll sign in with your Google account, set up you know, what room it's in, the name, that kind of stuff. The main screen contains your sort of relevant information for the day. You've got the time and date, you've got the temperature, you've got the sort of upcoming forecast, and any upcoming calendar events that you have linked to your Google account. If you swipe to the left, it'll show you more information like top news stories, suggested playlists, suggested YouTube videos, and various tips and tricks that the Home Hub can do. Swapping up from the bottom will get you to sort of quick menu of adjusting your brightness, adjusting the volume, turning on or off, do not disturb, setting alarm, or viewing the system settings. Swapping down on the screen brings you your home view, which is kind of like the smart home hub for the device. It'll show all the smart home devices that you have linked to Google Home, and it lets you adjust them depending on what they are, like thermostats or lights or whatever. I'll go into more detail a little bit later in the video. All of these functions work flawlessly. Basically, it's quick, it's responsive. It's widely accepted that Google Assistant is the best AI in terms of holding a Q&A session. More often than not, Google Assistant will give you the right answer to an actual question because it can sort of look through a Google search result. But more importantly, Google Assistant is really good with follow-up questions and context. And that's something that I found that Alexa struggles with. Since Google can fully utilize the power of their search engine, whenever you ask it to find, let's say, a local restaurant, a hardware store, just anything kind of like that, 
it really utilizes the whole screen. It'll give you, you know, the working hours, the phone number, a map of how to get there with directions and traffic. It's not something that you might necessarily use all the time, but it's nice that they put the thought into it and kind of made it a fully baked product. Google Assistant also excels at voice recognition. In the Google Home app, you can set up multiple users and also have a voice profile for all of them. So when I ask Google what's next on my calendar, it knows to only show what's next on my calendar and not for someone else that's in my household. However, there are definitely still a few places where the Home Hub could improve. There's a function called Ambient Mode, which is kind of like a screensaver for the Google Home Hub. Some people are gonna like it because you have a choice of your Google Photos, curated artwork, um, just a clock, and experimental sources from Facebook and Flickr, whatever that is. It's really quick to update Google Photos and show your most recent pictures and stuff like that, but I personally hate it, and that is because for whatever reason, I can't turn it off. So all that glanceable information that I had, like my weather, my traffic, I don't see them unless I come over and tap the screen. And I think that is such a waste. One of my favorite features on the Echo Show is a constant cycle of relevant news and interesting stories that show up on the screen that kind of prompt me to interact with it. Every other smart display kind of emits this for whatever reason. Google Assistant also lacks the plethora of skills that Alexa has. And I'm not talking about the smart home skills, but more like the quirky uh, jokes and games and stories and stuff like that that Alexa can do. Google Home has some of them, but not nearly to the extent of what the Echo does. It kind of just makes it a more fun device. What it does have though is a very large repertoire of smart home skills and device compatibilities. Just about every mainstream and non-mainstream smart home device is most likely gonna have uh, both Alexa and Google Home compatibility. Just looking through the list of devices that you can set up in Google Home is quite impressive. You can also cast your media, which is really nice. So if you have a Chromecast or an Android powered TV, for example, you can ask the Google Home Hub to send a YouTube video or open Netflix or whatever to any of these connected devices. Alexa has this too, but Google has YouTube. And until these two companies stop fighting, YouTube will pretty much only be on the Google Home. You can of course incorporate this into your routines that you set up. So you can say, good morning Google or whatever, and it might just start playing Spotify in one place, turn on the lights in somewhere else, whatever. You will need to set up your rooms and all your routines in the Google Home app. On the Google Home Hub itself, you can't actually edit anything. It'll only show what's already set. The home view portion of the Home Hub is really well done. When you swipe down from the top of the screen, it shows all your active smart home devices, and then you can go through them room by room. My only gripe with it is because the screen is kind of small, if you have a lot of devices or a lot of rooms, you're gonna do a lot of scrolling and jumping through layers of menus. Not the end of the world, but it can become a little bit tedious. All smart home commands are executed quite quickly. Things like turning lights on and off are pretty fast, and that's kind of to be expected but also change the temperature of your thermostat, for example. Even pulling up the security footage from my Arlo security camera was pretty quick, and that's typically the slowest function that a smart display or even a phone can do. So all of this brings us to the golden question. Should you buy this? There's one advantage of the Google Home Hub that we have not discussed yet, and that's the price. You can buy it pretty much anywhere for $99 and that's about half the price of the competition. If you have a very Google-oriented life, there's no doubt that Google Home is gonna be useful to you. The seamless integration of your Google accounts and your calendar is second to none in terms of productivity. The only drawback really is a speaker, and that's potentially inconsequential depending on if you have a Bluetooth speaker you can hook it up to, or if you just don't listen to a lot of music at home. Ultimately, it'll come down to personal preference, as it always does. I think there's very little left to be desired from the Google Home Hub. For the first generation smart display, I think Google has absolutely nailed it. And for half the price of the competition, I think the Google Home Hub is a no-brainer. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you liked the video, hit that like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. Till next time, see ya.